Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, Gorilla Army Nation, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm hurting. You're hurting. What's going yeah, on? I hurt my back this weekend. You hurt your back this weekend? Mm-hmm. I'm getting old. You look way too young to be throwing your back out. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I threw my back out uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, so... I'm feeling you. We're just going to be some crotchety old men on the podcast today, apparently. Yep. The reason I brought it up is because I probably sound a little crotchety today. Well, you know, that maybe that's okay. The, the episode that we released this last Monday, which will be weeks in the past by the time people actually hear this, uh, you were pretty feisty on it when I was going through and listening and c- coming up with the show notes for it. I was like, man, Landon sounds like he's on one today. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I do. So, um, this one secret, ad- uh, guilty admission. Um, I do these podcasts mainly because they give me free access to the hosts. So, doing a podcast with you, doing a podcast with David. Uh, A lot of times if I have questions about something, I'm like, hey, I can trick Landon into doing an episode about this and get my questions answered. So completely self-centered and selfishly, I asked you to talk about what we're going to be bringing up today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're just going to let it fly and let it flow and fire away. Yeah. So, um, Here's the thing that I have been having a lot of trouble with, and maybe other people are as well, uh, which is conversations. You have this like natural gift of gab. You can get on a, I mean, you can talk me through anything. You can get on your Facebook lives and you just go off. You can get on, like we do our uh, Thursday afternoon calls And anybody who's got a problem, you think about it for like 0.3 seconds and you're like, okay, I would handle it like this. And you just spat out some stuff that sounds so natural. Um, But a lot of us, when we're out there trying to either initiate conversations or re-engage people or transition the uh, transition from the, Hey, what's up? Nice to know you into the, Hey, maybe we should get on a call together. A lot of us out there don't have that natural gift of gab that you do. So I wanted to spend some time kind of going through your logic, your, your thought process on how to approach conversations, how to engage people, how to convert or, or transition. And then if there's time at the end, I wanted to ask you about re-engaging people that didn't buy and then even also people that did buy but you haven't talked to in a while because those are always... I think the biggest part is it's always awkward for me and for other people um, to, to reach out to people cold, even if we've talked to them in the past. Yep. It's starting the conversation and knowing how to transition the conversation is the most difficult thing people who are not highly trained salespeople deal with. It's just like, this is the thing, right? And this is why so many people in our space lean towards paid traffic or hiring somebody to build them a funnel and all of that shit because they don't know how to go get clients on their own, which really comes down to knowing how to start a conversation, knowing when to start that conversation, then knowing how to transition to, hey, would it make sense if we blank, right? Whether that's meet for a cup of coffee or get on a Zoom call or work together, whatever. Most of us are actually really good at it. We just think that there's some special secret thing to say that's totally bullshit. Here's what it comes down to. If you know what it is that you do and you know who it is that you want to work with and you're really clear on those two things, it gets really easy to see the people that you should start a conversation with. And then starting a conversation with somebody is just really simple, right? Hey, how's all the things? Hey, hey, thanks for the love on my post today, right? What's going on in your world? Start a conversation. Be human. So why is it then that 
when we do this, we either overthink it. Sometimes I'll look at a message and I'll be like, is that really the right wording? Is that the approach that I want to take? Does that make me come off sounding too needy? Does it sound like I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to be the guy that's, that's trying to slide up into their DMS and pitch my services. Why is it that we overthink and not just let it be a natural conversation like it normally would be? For some reason, we think that that starting and having a conversation around the thing we have for sale is different than any other regular, natural, normal conversation with another human being. And many of us have tried, quote unquote, the wrong way, and it backfires on it, on us, and it doesn't feel good. And, right, um, you send a pitch to somebody in Messenger cold, and they're if they respond, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And most often they just don't respond, right? And then they they like avoid you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about your thing. Nobody cares how amazing it is. They don't care about that. What is it that they care about? Themselves. So how do you start a conversation with somebody? Be interested, not interesting, and get them talking about themselves. Now, I remember when me and you first started talking that's what you did to me. We were in a private marketing email marketing group. And I remember the first thing that I ever got from you was, Hey, that post that you posted was pretty funny. Um, I really liked it. We should talk. And it was, uh, it was, it was about me. You're like, Hey, I enjoyed something that you did. Um, I would like to talk to you further about it. And it just came off so natural. And I didn't even, um, I mean, looking back at it two years later, I'm like, oh, wow, that was like the, the seeds of like this awesome business relationship that has grown into what it is. But I didn't even see it coming. I was just like, oh, this is a cool guy that likes my really sarcastic sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's like, for those of you listening to this, listen to what Nathan said. I said to him, that wasn't verbatim, but it was damn near verbatim. There's no secret handshake word I use. There's no bullshit fluffery you know psychosomatic gymnastics like it's not that it's hey i thought the thing that you did was cool we should talk right literally that's basically what i said and yeah is that the only thing that i say when i start a conversation with somebody no but it's always coming from that same place hey what's up with you right that's just humaning. So I think that this works really well on like Facebook and LinkedIn um, because there is that, there's that foot in the door. You can like somebody's post and then you can send them a message. Hey, that post was really funny. Or you can engage with them on social media. You can leave a comment and then you can hit them up with a, a follow-up message that's on the same um, kind of wavelength. What about reaching out to people cold on like an email or something like that if, if you heard them on a podcast or is there a different tactic there where it's not social media, it's, it's more formal? No. Um, if you're reaching out to somebody cold, I recommend that you do a little bit of research on them beforehand, right? Get really clear on who they present themselves as and then show up in messenger, email, phone call, face-to-face, -face, whatever, with this thing. People want to feel heard and they want to feel understood. And if you showed up to me and I didn't know anything about you and you were like, man, Gorilla Army Nation is totally awesome. That story that you told about where the gorilla thing came from and your take on sales is fucking rad. Guess what? Now you've got my attention, I'm paying attention, and I'm happy to have a conversation because you just showed up to my world with, hey, I'm paying attention, meaning I hear you, and I think that's cool, which means, it, as far as I can tell, you and I are on the same page, which means you understand me, right? And now I'm going to be totally open to what you got. And how you go from that to, here's the cool thing that I want to talk to you about, and that was all just bullshit and smokescreen just to get you to pay attention right? How you make that transition is, is as important, if not more important. And we do that through asking questions. So 
clarify that a little bit because I think this is another spot that people trip up. They just go on and on. And I'm even guilty of this myself taking the, Hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. Five or six messages longer than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I've been paying attention in your world, Landon, and it doesn't seem to me that you've got a podcast. Is there any reason you don't do a podcast? No, man. There's a million things on my plate and it's just not at the top of the priority list. Oh, interesting. Would you want to do a podcast if it was easy and you didn't have to do anything to get it done? Well, yeah, but like how the hell would I do that? I don't know. Have somebody produce it for you? Show up and have a conversation once or twice a month for 30 to 45 minutes and let somebody else handle all the shit? Really? That's possible? Yeah, dude. It's actually, it's what I do. No shit. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing a podcast. Now, that only works in that instance if I've been wanting to do the thing, right? I'm, I'm problem aware, solution aware. I'm just not you aware, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's something that I want and I respond like that and you're like, yeah, dude, it's really easy. Like, do you want to do a podcast? Hell yeah, I want to do a podcast. How come you're not? I ain't got time. Hmm, that's interesting. What do you mean you ain't got time? Uh, well, I'd have to record it and then I'd have to like process it and like upload it to all these places and edit it and all of that nonsense. Hmm, have you ever considered having somebody do all that shit for you? No, not really. Tell me about that. Okay. In that back and forth, all I did was ask Landon questions, right? From your shoes. And so I guess the kind of the takeaway for me from that was um, until you got a very clear yes, that this is something I'm interested in. You didn't even say that it's something that you do. It was like, Hey, well, would it make sense of this, this, and this, or are you kind of looking for something that does this and this and this? And once you said yes to all of those, then you were like, well, I actually can do that for you. If you want to talk about it, it wasn't, Hey, by the way, Landon, um, I do a podcast. Are you interested in in doing a podcast? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's even, there's even another, another little piece to that in there. It's, it's not, um, Hey, are you interested in this? It's, well, if you could do a podcast without having to do all of those things, would you, would you consider doing a podcast? Hell yeah. If I didn't have to do all those things, I'd totally do a podcast. Cool. Well, let's pretend that I could do all of those things and I totally get you and your voice and your style and we're on the same page. Would it make sense for us to have a conversation about somebody taking all that shit off your plate And you show up once or twice a month to answer a few questions and then somebody else did all the rest of that shit. Would it make sense for us to discuss that? Hell yeah, it would make sense. And here we are doing a podcast, right? And you can really only get those, um, those, those answers to, to know which questions to ask. These are the things that my potential client wants. These are the things that my potential client doesn't want or is trying to avoid to know how to have that conversation, to know how to do that transition, it takes a couple of conversations, if not a, a dozen or more conversations. Yep. Yeah. If you showed up and said, man, I've got this, I've got this app that will, will let you record a podcast and then you can go upload it and edit it and all that stuff. I'd be like, that's fantastic, but I don't have time and I'm not going to make time. Right. I don't have time. I don't have money means I'm not going to make time or I'm not going to make the money available right? But if you know your market and you ask a couple of questions, so me, the person you're asking those questions to goes, I'm in that bucket or I'm in that bucket. Now you know what to make an offer about. And the offer is not, well, I do that thing. You should buy that thing. The offer is, hmm, if that was possible, would it make sense for us to discuss it? Right? And I think that one thing I just want to bring up real quick that I've heard you say is if you're not exactly clear on what the offer should be, if you're not exactly clear on what their objections are, or what uh, their desires are, you've told me um, another way to transition is to say, Hey, I've got this crazy idea 
And I'd like to get your feedback on it because it, it's something that someone like you would probably have an interest in. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you don't know for certain who your market is or what exactly they want, the fastest and really the only way to get to that information is to start conversations. And here's another one, but Landon, I don't know how to start a conversation with somebody to get them to listen to the thing I do. Yeah, you do. Stop, think, stop thinking about it so hard. Hey, I've got this crazy idea. Would you give me 10 or 15 minutes so I can run this by you and you can tell me if I'm nuts or not? Right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you reach out to somebody cold like that, you're going to probably not get a whole lot of people saying, yeah, I'll totally talk to you. I'll give you my time. But friends, people who are in the same uh, world that you're in, the same space that know of you, and that's called social currency, right? That's how you get people to know you with social currency. It's really easy. It's really easy. And then all you got to do is ask the same three or four questions to half a dozen people and look at the, look at the, um, the patterns, right? Oh, they all want this. They want to show up and talk and they don't want to do any of that other shit. Okay, cool. So this app that I've got, it's not for these people, right? Or maybe it's time to hit the drawing board with the app and add that feature in so that it will be for those people. So my last question is, and we've only got a couple of minutes before we got to get out of here, but my last question is re-engaging people. I had a sales call with them. They said, yes, this makes sense, but it doesn't make sense right now. Or yes, let's do this. And six months has gone by since we did it. And I want to reconnect with them and start something up again. I always struggle with this one. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to do this. And I want everybody listening to this, don't use the words that I'm about to say verbatim. There's a lot of ways to get this same question across. Are you still interested in X? Hey, Bob, are you still interested in X? Hey, Bob, are you still interested in client acquisition strategies that don't suck your wallet dry and cost you all the time you've got? Right? Like, it's simple. You had a conversation with somebody, they were interested in, in your thing enough to have a conversation with you. And for whatever reason, let's just say they slipped through the cracks. The probability is, is that you didn't ask them the questions they needed to answer so they could go, Oh my God, this is exactly what I need. But we can cover that on another episode. If they slipped through the cracks, they were on the fence. They flat out told you, no, it's simple. Hey, Bob, are you still interested in result you get for them? And what about if I've gotten the result? Because my biggest thing is, well, if they want it, you know, I, I did it. They were happy with it. But if they were really happy with it, I shouldn't have to reach back out to them. They would naturally reach back out to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're talking about reengaging a client. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is all about hearing them and understanding them. And if you hear them and understand them, you know what problems they're facing that you can solve above and beyond what you've already done. And the way that you do that is is by keeping the lines of communication open. And this is probably the biggest thing that most people leave money on the table about is they don't continue to communicate with their previous clients, right? I'm in the process of, of, eradicating that from my world completely because now I do a monthly ongoing thing with my clients, right? So all of the clients that I want to work with at that level, they're just my clients every month. Make the sale once, right? But let's say that you signed somebody up a year ago or 18 months ago or nine months ago or six months ago and you did your thing for them. Well, if you can do your thing for them again, the way you re-engage them is, is, hey, Bob, how's all the things? Oh, I'm important enough for, for Nathan to reach out and ask me how the things are, right? If they are a good client, they'll give you a little bit more than a three-word response. If they're a eh client, they're going to give you a one, two, three-word response, right? They're going to give you, uh, it's progressing, right? It's going. Things are good, right? If they're a good client, they're going to give you something more along the lines of, oh yeah, man, this thing's totally da 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 and that and this and the other, that thing over there is on fire, but da 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 right? They're going to start a conversation with you and then just go where they took you, right? So glad to hear that thing's going da 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 Awesome sauce, right? 
just have a conversation with them. All right, Landon, I'm just going to say, I freaking love you, man. <laughs> you're, you're awesome. And, uh, the way that you break this stuff down to make it so easy to understand, not always easy to duplicate, but easy to understand. And I appreciate that. You got it, brother, man. All right, sweet. So until the next episode, where can people go if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast? We do this at salesgorillapodcast.com every Monday. Nice. All right, man. We will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't hurt your back.